everyone. So on this video, we're going to be talking about wildlife conservation. We're going to be following along closely with our manual, Wildlife Conservation, the Worth of Wild Roots. And we're going to be talking about the different wildlife you can see in Colorado overall, and ones that are very specific to the Pueblo area. So let's go ahead and get started and start talking about the different animals, insects, and birds you can see here in Colorado. Let's start off this conversation talking about the different bird species you can spot around Colorado. The ones you see here are called house finches. The brown ones seen here are females, and males are typically red colored on their chest. In the animal world, the males are typically the more colorful gender, which helps them attract mates. These birds are ground foragers and are often the most popular bird species you will see flocking to your backyard bird feeder. If you hear a high-pitched bird call, like the one you will hear in a few seconds, then you are definitely nearby some house finches. These dark black slash brownish color birds are common grackles. These birds are mostly ground foragers. They also will steal food from other birds and at times will even kill any other smaller bird species such as sparrows. If you hear a lower pitched bird call like the one I'm about to play for you, then you'll know you have common grackles nearby. Here's what they sound like. Another common wildlife species you will see around the feeder is the pigeon. Pigeons come in a variety of colors and there are over 308 species in total. The common pigeons we see around here are classified as rock doves. When classifying bird species, doves and pigeons are actually the same bird family, but they have different names due to the size differences between the two birds. Pigeons are typically bigger and smaller species are called doves. Pigeons are actually on the birds of Colorado nuisance list due to their noises, diseases, and the desires to build large messy nests on homes and buildings. If you hear a bird call like this one here, then you have become a hangout spot for the local pigeon community. The large bird you see here is an osprey. They are a type of hawk with slender bodies, long narrow wings, and long legs. They are larger and longer winged than a red-tailed hawk, which has a similar look to the osprey. Their color patterns are noticeable with their brown tops and white below, with a white head and a broad brown stripe through their eye. These birds search for fish over bodies of water, such as the Pueblo Reservoir, where they dive feet first to grab a meal. They typically build their large stick nests in open spaces, such as telephone poles like this one did. They have a higher pitch call that could become quite loud and long. Our next species is the killdeer. They have large round heads with large eyes and a short bill. You are more likely to see a killdeer walking or running along the ground rather than in flight. They love to be in open ground with low vegetation such as lawns, golf courses, and parking lots. Their call is a medium pitch trill that sounds a lot like this. If you take a trip into the more wooded parts of Colorado, you might stumble into the home of a downy woodpecker. These little tree tappers have straight chisel like bills, blocky heads, and wide shoulders. This one was photographed in the San Isabel Forest just outside of Rye, Colorado. If you see a woodpecker in Colorado and they are checkered black and white color, then you have also found a downy woodpecker. They use their bills to trill into trees and eat the insects find, found inside. Out of the common knocking noise we all associate with woodpeckers, you can also listen for their bird call to help identify what type of bird species are around you. The fast fellow you see here is a yellow warbler. They are small songbirds with rounded heads and thin bills. They are slightly smaller than a finch, which is the first type of bird species we, see, we saw in the very beginning of the video. The yellow warblers are uniformly yellow in color with a large black eye. These birds are common in the higher elevations of Colorado because they like to be in the thickets, and this is what they sound like. These little birds here are some of my favorite bird species to entice into my yard for some bird watching. They are scaled quail. 
a compact chicken-like bird with a small head, plump body, short tail, and short strong legs. Quail don't really like to fly and will choose to run as often as they can unless they have absolutely no other choice. They can actually move pretty quick and reach up to speeds of, of up to 12 miles per hour. Their grouping patterns are called convoys, so the next time you see a bunch of quail quickly running across the road, you can think, oh, there goes a convoy of quail. Their call sounds something like this. An easy to identify species you might see cruising your lawn is the American Robin, which is a fairly large songbird with a large brown body, long legs, and a fairly long tail. They're in the thrush bird family. Their lovely call can be heard all around Colorado. There's another easy to identify species seen in the wilds of Colorado, and it's a turkey. Turkeys can be found in the Pueblo Reservoir, the Nature Center, and if you hike on the BLM land that is out in Pueblo West that is locally referred to as Turkey Creek. As part of our wildlife conservation for Colorado, these birds do have a hunting season, which opens September 1st of this year and runs through October 23rd. Allowing the limited hunting on these birds allows for a population regeneration and keeps the local ecosystems more balanced for other bird species as winter enters our state and food resources become harder for everything to find. A common sound you will hear if you get close to a wild turkey sounds something like this. One iconic bird that makes an important stop in our state before continuing on north is the American bald eagle. Up to 1,200 bald eagles visit each year and they are relatively easy to spot if you take a walk on any of the trails in the Pueblo Reservoir down by the river. They are most active at the beginning or end of the daylight hours and they tend to hunker down in trees when night hits. The eagle's arrival is a huge event in Pueblo and our town hosts our annual Pueblo Eagle Days. If you have never had an opportunity to go to the Pueblo Eagle Days, I highly encourage you to attend when you can, as this is a great educational event that focuses on the preservation of these great birds. These events typically happen in February, so start looking next year to see what events you might want to participate in. Their iconic call can be heard all throughout the reservoir if you decide to take a chilly walk in the early months of the year.
Outside of birds, you can also attract various pollinator species into your yard. A common pollinator you can entice into your yard is a hummingbird with a hummingbird feeder. This little guy here is enjoying a syrup drink to replenish his energy levels. Having a closed hummingbird feeder like this keeps the birds from attempting to steal the nectar inside the feeder. If you have a more open hummingbird feeder, you can also give the bees a place to rest and eat as you can see here. Both of these feeders are in the same area of my backyard and this allows for a variety of wild insects to come and find refuge in my yard besides being in my flowers. Remember, bees just want to get on with their day and they really don't want to have to sting you. So give them their distance and enjoy watching their interactions in your yard. Outside of birds, bees, and hummingbirds, you can also attract some beautiful butterflies. This butterfly seen here, which was photographed in the city park of Pueblo, is known as a painted lady. These butterflies can be found on every continent in the world, with the exception of Australia and Antarctica. They like to feed on thistle plants during their migrating pa patterns, so in order to catch a glimpse of these pretty ladies, you might have to let your weeds get a bit wild for a bit. Not only are they pretty to look at, but they are fast, too. They can fly as fast as 30 miles per hour and travel up to 100 miles per day when migrating. These ladies truly know how to live in the fast lane. Dragonflies can be found around any body of water here in Colorado. And a great spot to see these buzzing insects locally is at the Cattail Ponds out in Pueblo West. This one in this picture is an eastern pond hawk dragonfly and they can be identified by their bright solid blue bodies. They hunt other insects and even their own species if they get hungry enough. Males will aggressively defend their territories and do patrols to keep out other males. Their wings are so big they can actually be heard as they fly around. If you hear this buzzing sound nearby the water's edge, don't be worried it's a hornet. It's most likely just a patrolling dragonfly. One of our larger predators you can come across in Colorado, and especially here in Pueblo during the summer months, is a bull snake. Bull snakes have narrow heads, eyes on the side, and don't have a rattler. They can create a loud snorting sound that resembles a bull snort, hence their namesake, a bull snake. Listen closely and let me know what you think. Most people find that that sound actually sounds more like a rattler rather than a bull, which often leads people to misidentify snakes between bull snakes and rattlesnakes. The easiest way to identify the difference between the two snakes is to look at their shape, at their head shape. Bulls have narrow heads and rattlers have triangular heads. Snakes play an important role in our ecosystems here in Colorado. If you run into one of these slithery creatures, just give them a wide berth and if need be, relocate them using a snake pole to an area where they are least likely to be disturbed by people. Remember, bull snakes don't carry venom, but if they bite you, they can still create some infection issues in your body. Make sure to always go to the doctor if you get bit by a snake. Here is a picture of a rattlesnake that also decided to come into my yard for a visit. Colorado is home to two different types of rattlers. They are the Western Prairie Rattlesnake and the Massasagua. The latter of these two species stays below 5,500 feet in the southeastern plains, while the Western Prairie Snakes can be spotted everywhere and go as high as 9,000 feet in elevation and are longer than the Massasaguas. On a rattler, you will want to notice their triangular head that is wider than their body and their forward-facing eyes. Rattlesnakes do have a rattler on their tail end and will shake it when threatened. They do carry venom, which can cause severe health issues in humans. The bull snake you saw just before this rattler was actually coming into the yard looking for this snake. Bull snakes will eat rattlers, especially if it's in its own territory, so it's helpful to keep them around if you can. As I mentioned earlier, all snakes should be treated with caution and relocated if possible. Listen to the rattler sound of this snake to see if you can hear the difference between this fellow and the bull snake from earlier. Another reptile you can see roaming around here in Colorado is the Colorado checkered whiptails. These lizards are a hot item in the world of wildlife conservation here in our state because they have a very unique genetic makeup. The lizards are able to lay eggs without a male mate, meaning the offspring are identical to their mother. These lizards create new understanding for genetic variation and DNA expansion that could someday help doctors cure new diseases and other mutations in people. The Center for Biological Diversity is working hard to get these fast-running lizards on the Endangered Species Protection Act here in Colorado as they are quickly running out of habitat space due to the growing outreach of cities. 
The other neat thing about these lizards is that they have a predatory escape method, which allows their tails to be broken off and move around like the predator has their whole body. This allows the lizard to escape relatively unharmed and their tail does regrow. So if you see one of these fine looking ladies running around with a long tail, you know that she is truly a survivor of the Colorado wild. If you decide to take a trip into the mountains of our lovely state and venture into areas such as the Rocky Mountain National Park in Estes, Colorado, you have the opportunity to see some elk. Here you can see some cow elks with their calves in the middle of town enjoying some green summer grass. Every year, tons of tourists flock to this cozy mountain town to see the elk in large numbers. Since these are wild animals, be sure to give them a distance of 25 yards. Bull elks, especially during the mating season, can get aggressive towards people and have lowered their antlers at quite a few of the national park guests over the years. As it states in our lovely 4-H manual, all wildlife deserves respect and space. Here is what you'll be wanting to listen for when going out to spot some elk. Another grazing animal you can spot here in our state is the white-tailed deer. The doe you can see here is clearly a white tail because of her light tannish reddish body with a white underside of her tail. When danger is nearby, their tails will go up flashing the white as a sign for the rest of the herd to move out of the area. white tail buck vocalizations sound a bit like a balloon losing air. Take a listen. <laughs> Besides white-tailed deer, you can also spot mule deer. Mule deer are a deeper gray looking color and tend to hop when running instead of galloping like whitetail. Mule deer in does typically weigh around 100 to 200 pounds, while white-tailed does normally weigh in between 90 to 200 pounds. Their buck vocalizations also sound very different from a whitetail during the rut season. Take a listen and see if you can hear the difference. <coughs> One of the other common animals you can see bounding along on our plains of Colorado is the pronghorn. You may also hear people call them antelope due to their physical resemblance to the antelopes in Africa. However, on a DNA comparison scale, our, per our pronghorns are actually more closely related to giraffes than any other, any other animal. To tell males and females apart, an easy way is to look for a black patch on the jaw just below their eye. Only the males will have that. Both genders can have horns, so don't be fooled when watching these incredible creatures. They can also run extremely fast, and when pressured, can run as fast as 60 miles per hour in short bursts. The pronghorn, along with the white-tailed deer, meal deer, and the elk we saw earlier in this video, all have legal hunting seasons here in Colorado. Hunting is an important resource that the Parks and Wildlife Department uses to help keep species and population control and allow for vegetation to regrow in areas where the deer and the elk numbers have become too high. Conservation is all about allowing a balance of all living things and hunting is one of the tools that is used to accomplish that goal. Their snort chuckle sounds something like this. If you decide to go for a hike in the Beulah area here in Pueblo County, you might run into a black bear. Black bears are opportunistic eaters. Their diet typically consists of grasses, roots, berries, and insects. They do eat fish and can gain a taste for human food, which is why it's important to not feed the bears. And if you live in the areas where they are more common, it's important to use bear-proof garbage cans so they can't get a taste for your trash. If you decide to go for a hike in the Beulah or Rye area, be on the lookout for claw marks on trees, scat, and of course the familiar grumbling noise we associate with bears. Remember to back away slowly, and if you see fresh sign of a bear in an area, it's best to leave right away so you can let them continue on their day without any human interaction. Here's what a black bear sounds like. <laughs> Ever been driving through the Pueblo Reservoir near dawn and dusk and seen something move across the road? Unsure what it was? Chances are you probably spotted a lynx. We do have both lynxes and bobcats here in Colorado and we have a small population of them in the reservoir. Looking at them, it can be hard to identify the differences between a lynx and a bobcat, but here is something you want to keep in mind when looking at them. They have a short tail, similar body size, and pointed ear tufts. If you ever get to examine the ground to look for tracks of what you just saw, remember this. A lynx has a large paw print compared to that of 
that of that of a bobcat, and their tail looks like it has been dipped in ink. If you find rather large cat prints that are bigger than a house cat's, but smaller than a mountain lion's, you have stumbled upon some link prints. When threatened, they sound very much like an angry house cat. Take a listen. Our last big wild predator we are going to cover in this video is a mountain lion. We typically don't have them down here in Pueblo, but they do sometimes come down from the nearby mountains looking for food. Mountain lions are bigger than the bobcats and lynxes we were just talking about and hunt by stalking and pouncing on prey. Their diet typically consists of deer and other prey animals. Most of the time, mountain lions will move away from people hiking or biking, but it's always a good idea to be on the lookout. These are strong, powerful predators. If you ever encounter one, make sure you're big and loud to disprove the idea that you're prey. Don't run or turn your back on them as this will trigger them to attack. Be careful being out in the woods and always keep a sharp eye out for large predators. In case you are ever out camping and hear a scary scream from deep in the woods, just know it's most likely this big cat and not something else. Take a listen to this ferocious predator. Thanks for watching this wildlife conservation video, Colorado edition. We have got to hear many of the animals, insects, and birds you can spot in our colorful state. For an additional resource, take a look inside your manual for more ways to encourage more birds and pollinators into your backyard. Thanks for watching.